Hi friends, it's Mrs. P again with Manfish. This is a nonfiction book, I believe, and it is, there's some glare here, it's a story of Jacques Cousteau, and he is a French man who um, did a lot of under, under the, under the water, undersea studies, and so we're going to see, no, it's a biography, I beg your pardon. So let's see what is in this. Jacques Cousteau is one of my favorite, favorite people. Manfish, a story of Jacques Cousteau by Jennifer Bairn, illustrated by Eric Poubaillet. Uh, I'm hoping this isn't too dark to see. Bubbles rising through the silence of the sea, silvery beads of breath from a man deep, deep down. A strange and shimmering ocean land of swaying plants and fantastic creatures. A man fish swimming, diving into the unknown, exploring underwater worlds no one had ever seen. and no one could ever have imagined. I hope the rest of the pages aren't this dark. Our story starts many years before in France with a little baby born, little baby boy born under the summer sun. His parents named him Jacques. From the very beginning, little Jacques loved water, the way it felt on his hands, his face, his body, and water made him wonder. He wondered why ships floated, why he floated, and why rocks sank. One day, Jacques read a story about a man who hid underwater by breathing through a long tube, and Jacques tried it and discovered it was impossible. He dreamed that someday he would be able to breathe underwater for real. At night, Jacques dreamed he could fly with the birds among the clouds with his arms stretched out like wings. Jacques spent his days playing, experimenting, and creating. He wrote little books that he illustrated with his own drawings, and he was fascinated by machines. He studied blueprints and built a model of a crane that was as tall as he was and actually worked. Wait, is that what that is? Yeah, look, 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 look. Behind here, that is the crane that actually worked. Maybe we'll talk about it more. Movies fascinated Jacques too. He wanted to know how they were made, how the cameras worked and how chemicals made pictures appear on the film. Jacques saved his allowance penny by penny until he had enough to buy a small um, home movie camera. The first thing he did was take it apart and put it back together. Then he began to film everything around him. He put his brother, cousins, parents, and friends in his movies. He dressed up as a villain with a painted-on mustache and made some very villainous films. Jacques was always the star, the director, and the writer, and usually the cameraman. When Jacques finished school, he joined the French Navy. His ship sailed all around the world, and everywhere he went, he filmed what he saw. In China, he filmed men catching fish with their bare hands. They held their breath underwater for many minutes. Jacques wondered what that would be like. He 
You think in the middle of the ocean you could catch a fish with your bare hands? Whoops. One day at a beach, a friend gave Jacques a pair of goggles with rubber frames and glass to look through. Jacques wore them into the ocean. Beneath the water, he was surrounded by silvery grief, green forests of sea plants and fish he had never seen before. Everything was silent and shimmering, and it was a whole new world. When he came up, he saw cars and people and buildings and telephone poles, and once again he went below into the magical underwater world. At that moment, Jacques knew his life was changed forever. His eyes had been opened to the wonders of the sea. Jacques and his friends, Philippe and Didi, began to dive, to dive together. They experimented to see how long they could stay underwater and how deep they could go. Jacques created a waterproof case for his camera to film the amazing kingdom he and his friends were exploring beneath the surface. Wow. They made rubber suits to keep themselves warm and flippers to help them kick better. But Jacques wanted to stay down longer than just one breath at a time. He realized he needed to take more air with him, enough air to explore the mysterious depths and the vast expanses of the ocean. To swim through the sea as free as a fish. He wanted to become a man fish. And he began to work on just how to do it. On a warm summer day, Jacques stepped into the blue Mediterranean Sea with his new invention. He called it the aqualung because aqua means water and our lungs are the part of our body that holds the air that we breathe. Below the surface, Jacques swam and glided and dove and he did flips and somersaults and he stood upside down on one finger and laughed bubbles into the sea. Jacques could breathe. How do I get this so you can see it? Jacques could breathe beneath the water. And, and he could swim across miles of ocean, his body feeling what only scales had felt. His eyes seeing what only fish had seen. The water made him feel like he was flying, just like in his dreams. Jacques had done it. He had become a man fish. Jacques was ready to explore the oceans of the world. He needed a boat and found a big old wooden navy ship named Calypso. In a year, he turned it from a warship into an explorer ship. Jacques, Philippe, and Didi gathered a crew, their aqua lungs, their hopes, and their dreams and set off to explore the inside of the sea to film a world that no one had ever seen before. That is a big ship. Oh, I'm not sure how we're going to do this. We're going to have to do this a little at a time here. On their journeys, they dove deep into a seascape of plants, green and purple prickly plants, red branchy plants, spongy plants, wispy feathery swaying plants, 
slow dancing to the rhythms of the sea. And they discovered plants that could feed you, plants that could poison you, plants that look like fish, and fish that look like plants. Hang on, I have to flip this page open. The camera captured camouflaged scorpion fish, ugly as toads with poisonous spines, dorados, brilliant fish that glowed the colors of emeralds, sapphires and rubies, checkerboard fish with red and white checks from head to tail. Boy, they went down far. Deep down, they discovered a kingdom of giant rays, fish that fly through the water with wings that swim. They came face to face with a fish as big as a truck, with long fangs, lips like giant tires, and huge saucer eyes, and they called that the truck fish. On the bottom, they found pink ghost crabs with eyes on long stalks, buried so deep in the sand they looked like a garden of eyes and flute fish with heel or with heads like horses and bodies the shape of tubes sticking out of rocky openings like pencils in a cup. Here, let me show you all this. Everywhere the Calypso went, Jacques and his crew made films of what they saw. Films that played in movie theaters and films that played on TV. Millions of people all over the world discovered the wonders of the sea for the very first time with Jacques, Philippe, and Didi and their adventurous crew. After Jacques spent most of his life making movies about the sea, he saw something happening, something shocking. Plants that used to be alive and healthy were being poisoned and fish were sick and dying. Jacques saw that people, without realizing it, were slowly killing the sea and its creatures by dumping garbage and poisonous chemicals into the ocean he loved so much. Jacques knew what he had to do. He had to make movies, movies to warn people, movies to save the sea. Jacques also spoke to presidents, to kings and queens, and to people all over the earth, asking them to help save our oceans, our planet. And he spoke to children. Jacques dreamed that some, whoops, that someday it would be you exploring worlds never seen and never imagined. Whole new worlds, silent and shimmering, worlds that are now yours to discover, to care for, and to love. And that is the end of that. But it talks to you about, um, about Jacques Cousteau. He was a remarkable person, truly one of a kind. He was a protector of our planet and its creatures, an inventor, an adventurer, an explorer, a poetic writer, and spokesman, spokesperson for the sea. He was also an innovative filmmaker and photographer, and most of all, he loved life with a childlike sense of joy and an insatiable curiosity. That's all I can read for right now. Um, but he has written books and he's got films that were just amazing because I've watched many of them myself. So come into the library, check this out. And if you're interested at all in, in what is under 
the sea in the ocean, you will just be delighted. All right, bye.